Please turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. And as always, we desire to worship the Lord in the way that he desires to be worshiped. Amen? Amen. And there's no better way to do that than to look into God's word to consider how we ought to approach him in our worship. And this morning, we'll look at 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. <clears throat> and it reads, Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the court, and he stood on it. Then he knelt on his knees in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands toward heaven, and said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant, David my father, what you declared to him. You spoke with your mouth and with your hand have fulfilled it this day. Now therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant David my father what you have promised him, saying, you shall not lack a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Now therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant David. Amen. Solomon here is giving his prayer of dedication at the newly built temple. The ark of the Lord has now been brought into the Holy of Holies. The glory of the Lord has filled the temple. God, in his mercy, he's been mercy, he has, has shown his kindness again to Israel. They have a place to worship. They have a place where he identifies with them, this new temple. He's kept his promises. He identifies with his people now through his special presence with them. This is a joyous occasion. And Solomon, in his humility, imagine a king of a nation, the leader of a nation, humbling himself before God. That gives us a picture of how our posture ought to be before God in worship, amen? amen. Solomon begins his prayer with three things. He describes God as a promise-keeping, a covenant-keeping God. He points to God's promise to David, and he asks God to keep the promise that he's made. Solomon explains in his prayer that there is no one like the God of Israel. There is no one like God. He's faithful and unchanging. God doesn't change his mind, and he doesn't relent. When God says something, it's true. When he says something is, it is. When he says something is not, it is not. When he makes a judgment, it will come to pass. When he makes a promise, it will be kept. And Solomon points to God's promise to David. God promised David in the Davidic covenant in 2 Samuel chapter 7 an everlasting throne. But God also attached conditions to this lineage. He attached conditions. He told David that he would not lack a man from his offspring on the throne so long as that offspring was faithful. But David's sons, we know, they ultimately failed, didn't they? They ultimately failed. Israel did lack a man on the throne. So then you would say, well, what, what of it then? 
What is, where's the everlasting throne? Where's the everlasting kingdom that God promised to David? Well, do you know who inherits the throne? Jesus inherits the throne. Jesus is king of Israel forever. Jesus is king of kings forever. Not merely over ethnic Israel. Jesus, Jesus is king of all. And who are his citizens? The church, the true Israel. The church are his kingdom citizens. The spiritual seed of Abraham. He is king over all. And he deserves our worship. We are to look to him and we are to see Jesus, our king, the promised one. God has been faithful to us in Jesus Christ. And we also ought to bow down in humility to him, just like Solomon bowed down before God in his prayer. And we ought to posture ourselves in humility before God, understanding that we are his kingdom subjects. And that ought to affect our worship, shouldn't it? It ought to affect the way we hear the word preached. It ought to affect the way we sing. When we sing of his promises, are we to doubt? When, when our sin is laid bare before us, are we to rebel against our king? Absolutely not. So let's take courage here. Let's take instruction here from Solomon. Let's take instruction here, understanding who Jesus is as the promised king of Israel. And let's look to God, understanding that he is a promise-keeping, covenant-keeping God. And let's rejoice in who he is. Let's pray. Father in heaven, how we adore you, our promise-keeping, covenant-keeping God. And you have kept your promises to us in Jesus Christ. And we praise you for that. Thank you for Christ. Thank you for everything about his person. Everything of who he is. Lord, help us as we sing, as we listen to the preaching, as we, as we pray. Help us, Lord, to worship you in a holy way, rejoicing in the person of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.